Hi everyone, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. When you're ready to move on from rental skates and buy your own pair of ice skates, the choices can be overwhelming. Don't let that stop you from purchasing your first pair of skates. I can't tell you how many skaters I've seen stop skating just because the rink's rental skates didn't provide them with a really good experience. If you like skating but are struggling with rental skates, it's time to get your own pair. Having your own pair of skates will make such a big difference. I can't even tell you how many parents have told me they wish that they had purchased skates earlier. After buying them, they felt like they wasted money on lessons and practice with the rental skates, or if they purchased inexpensive skates to start with, or ones that didn't fit properly. A good, well-fitted pair of skates will support you. You won't struggle with floppy ankles. You'll be able to get on with the fun and excitement of gliding on the ice. Today, I'll cover where to buy your skates, fitting tips, breaking in new skates, and how to properly care for them. The last time I did a video on this was back in 2020. That was one of my very first videos. While the information is still great, the production quality could have been better. Plus, I've learned a lot from all of you that left me comments and questions. Even if you watch that video, you're gonna wanna watch this one. Let's start with where to go to get your skates. Always purchase your figure skates from a shop that specializes in figure skating, that has a professional skate tech on staff, a good tech is knowledgeable about skates, has experience in properly mounting and sharpening figure skates, and will carry a wide selection of different brands and models to accommodate skaters of all ages, levels, shapes, and sizes. Why is this so important? All shops are not created equal. Some shops may sell figure skates, but actually specialize in hockey. At least that is true in my area. All the pro shops at all of the rinks that I coach at specialize in hockey. Most of them don't even sell figure skates anymore. Well, you can get figure skates sharpened there. I wouldn't advise that. Sharpening figure skates is not the same as sharpening a hockey skate. In fact, one shop that I went in even told me that while they can sharpen figure skates, it's better to go to a shop with all the correct tools and professional tech experienced with figure skates. That's why I always recommend Greg at Polar Skate Shop. If you're in my area of New Jersey, you can go to Greg too. Just as all shops are not created equal, all skates are not created equal. You often get what you pay for when it comes to skates. Cheaper skates are made with cheaper materials, usually are not worth the problems that they can create. This is why going to a trusted shop in person is so critical. Even though some websites will provide you with size charts, determining the correct skate size will vary from brand to brand and even sometimes by model with in the same brand. Your foot shape, height, weight, age, skating level, and how often you practice all contribute to determining which skate is best for you. In-person fittings offer unparalleled service. There are qualified skate techs in specialty stores across the US. Going to a specialty store allows you to try on different sizes and brands before deciding on which one is best for you. This is why I always caution against purchasing skates online or through a retail store like Dick's or Target. I always recommend that all my skaters go to Greg to purchase their skates. Sometimes I get pushback that it's too far. I'm unsure why as Greg's shop is only about 20 minutes from most of the rinks that I coach out of. Sometimes parents will say, isn't there anything closer? They'll decide just to go somewhere else. That somewhere is usually Dick's, Walmart, Target, or Amazon, because there's only a handful of specialty skate shops in the entire state of New Jersey. We're actually quite lucky to have Polar Skate Shop nearby. What usually happens when you order skates online or you get them at Dick's or Walmart or Target is that the skates have not been sharpened and the sizing isn't correct for you. Then you wind up having to return the skates and just go to Polar Skate Shop anyway. That's not saving you any time or a Money. Parents and skaters find this out only after their next lesson. Part of my job as a coach is to check my skater's equipment. Whenever I see a skater with new skates, the first thing I do is check the blade to see if it's been sharpened. Then I check the fit and advise on the next steps. It's best to just ask your coach or the rink skating director where to go before you make that mistake. Do this even if you have a skate shop at your rink because not all pro shops inside rinks are the best place to purchase figure skates. If you go to a specialty shop. Most shops will include your first sharpening with your purchase. While most skates come with a factory sharpening, it's often not of the best quality. Sometimes there's a protective coating that's 
on the blade to keep it from rusting until it's sold. Your initial sharpening in store will remove the protective coating and give you a radius of hollow, ROH, that is best suited to your skating level. Other adjustments and blade alignments are often included. As your skill level increases, so will the price of appropriate skates. The prices are often suggested by the manufacturer. You're probably not gonna save much, if anything, from ordering online or going to a discount or big box store. If you've asked your coach or skating director where to go, and there is absolutely nowhere reasonably near you to purchase skates, I have an entire other video that explains your options. There's a link to that video in the description down below. What about used skates? I understand that sometimes used skates are a way to keep costs down, but I caution against this. I've seen too many skaters in the wrong size to high of a level skate or even a completely worn down skate because they were trying to save a little money by purchasing a used pair. With a used skate, you have absolutely no actual way to tell how the skate was cared for. Plus, skates are often shaped or customized for a particular skater. Finding the right fit. An appropriate fit can make or break your experience on the ice. If the skates are too big, your foot's gonna slide around in the boot and you'll be unstable on the ice. Most skate manufacturers will make skates for different levels. A knowledgeable skate tech can show you a variety of the best options for your skill level. Your age, height, and weight will also factor in to the strength of the boot that you need. A smaller skater that is frequently on the ice, progressing rapidly, may require a higher quality boot and blade than the same skater who puts in less ice time and less aggressive practice. Purchasing a boot and blade mounted together can help keep the price down. Still, it's essential to always speak with your coach first before you buy anything. Your coach may have an idea of what they want you in and make suggestions on which models are best for you. They'll also know the exact place for you to go for a fitting. Here are some tips for a boot fitting. Your skates should fit snugly. Your toes need a little wiggle room. The heels and the ball do not need any room. Growing children need little growth room, about one eighth to one quarter of an inch, about half a size. So when you go for your fitting, wear thin, skating socks. If you don't have skating socks, most good shops will carry them so that you can purchase a pair while you're there. Leather boots can often be stretched up to half a size in length and a full size in width as your foot grows. You can expect a break-in period, but it will not break in if a boot is too stiff for your level. We call this overbooting. Heat moldable boots are far more comfortable to start with than stiff leather. If your toes are scrunched up inside your boot, it's time to get new skates. Some boots have a higher arch than others. Trying on several pairs will help you to get the best fit. The insoles can also be removed and replaced depending upon the shape of your arch. I highly recommend Jackson Supreme insoles, by the way. I wear them, I don't even wear Jackson skates. I wear a Dea. In fact, there are many hockey players that have tried them too. They've said they're the best thing ever. There's a link to my video on them in the description down below. Taking care of your new skates. Hard guards will protect the blades when you're walking on any surface other than the ice. Never walk on cement, metal, or any other surface other than the rubber matting without your skate guards. There are lots of different types of hard guards. I have more information about them in my other videos. There's a link to them in the description down below. When you're storing your boots after you've taken them off, you want to put soakers on them to prevent rust. You should never keep your blades in hard guards after taking them off. After skating and taking off your skates, use a microfiber towel to dry the surface of the blade and the bottom of the boot. Then put your soakers on. Use a skate bag to protect them and transport skates to and from the rink. You don't want to tie the laces together and carry them over your shoulder like you've seen in the Hallmark Channel movies. When you get home, take your skates out of the bag and let them air out to prevent your blade from rusting and other damage to the boot from moisture. Never, and I mean never, ever, ever leave your skates in the car between practices. The temperature is either too hot or too cold. It can damage your skates. I know for some of you it's easier to just leave them in the car, but don't do it. When the edges of your blades become dull, you may notice that you have difficulty holding an edge. You might be sliding around. This means it's time to get your blade sharpened. Generally, you'll need to have your blade sharpened on average after about every 20 hours of skating. This varies depending upon your personal preference. If you skate on synthetic ice or outdoors, your sharpening is gonna get dull a lot more quickly. I have a blade sharpening tracker in my figure skating annual planner. There's a lot 
of other information in that too. If you haven't gotten yours yet, there's a link to it in the description down below. It makes an excellent gift for your skater or yourself. Breaking in new skates. All skates, just like shoes, have a break-in period. The length of the break-in period depends on your level and how often you skate. Here are some tips for breaking in your new skates. First, you must lace your skates correctly to ensure that you're getting the most out of your skating experience. Skates that are too loose can cause your ankles to roll in, not create enough support for your foot. It can also lead to foot problems or premature breakdown of the boot. Skates are too expensive to break down prematurely. The most common issue in lacing skates is to lace them too loosely in the ankle area and too tightly at the top, the last two hooks. This is going to provide you little in the way of support of your ankle and undue pressure on the top when you're bending. For most skates, you want your skates to be snug in the toe, tight through the arch and the ankle, snug at the top. There are some exceptions. For example, a Dea, like these skates have their own way of lacing. I have another video where I show you exactly how to tie your skates correctly. There's a link to that in the description down below. At first, you'll want to tie the top two hooks more loosely than you usually would for the first two or three times you're skating in a new pair of boots. Be careful stopping in newly sharpened blades. This is true for every time you get your blade sharpened. If you have pressure points or discomfort, ask your professional skate tech if they can adjust or punch out the area for you. You can see that in these. There's bump outs on the sides. I think you can see that. I have other videos about blades because as you progress, you're going to need to purchase your boots and blades separately. I'm working on a video all about boots. You don't want to miss that when I post it. So remember to subscribe and ring the bell so that you never miss a video. If this video helped you, give it a like too. That actually helps other people find the video. And I have more videos that can help you right here. This is Amy. Thank you for watching. I will see you real soon. Bye.